Welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special. I'm Priya Sheth and I'm joining you from the Hanover Messe, which is the largest industrial fair in the world. Now, there are about 6,500 exhibitors at this fair and most of them are showcasing the future of manufacturing technology and are also showcasing some incredible amount of innovation. technology in industrial manufacturing, big data, artificial intelligence as well as the internet of things. In fact, the big theme around here is that of digitization and one such company that's showcasing several of its technology applications out here is that of Siemens. In fact, we did get a chance to catch up with the global management of Siemens, Cedric Nike, to understand how India fits in the larger context of things. So digitalization is at the heart of what we do. So we want to build hardware and software. Now, you asked me on how important is India for this. I mean, India is at the heart of digitalization, if you think about it. And it started, if you look at how many talents you have in digitalization, a lot of our R&D, software R&D, is actually based in, I think, in Pune, in Bangalore, and a lot of those capabilities. So Siemens is going digital. In order to go digital, it needs India. We're working with India to do it. But the important part is also that it's not only India for the software engineers, but also as a market. As India becomes more industrialized and more sort of moving to 4.0, we want the, to develop also the market and we will do more local value add so that we can actually create products for India and then take these products and move them out to the world. Uh, Siemens AG has always named India as one of the top priority markets. So when you look at the overall context of things and how um, you know verticals have been growing in the Indian context, uh, what's the kind of growth outlook that you have for India? Firstly, how important is it? And secondly, in terms of growth, where do you see pockets of growth coming from? So um, the main thing if you look at, at India is that um, the classical first wave of growth was the electrification, was the building of, of, of um, mobility, um, energy net generation, that's the first wave. And if you look at how successful we've been on the new generation, on, on wind for example with Siemens Gamesa, these were sort of the first wave of growth. The second wave of growth which we're seeing is the industrialization, as, as you, you're building really world champions in in industrial manufacturing, we're seeing these capabilities are going. Now, I'm a, personally a huge um, fan of India because I've just seen on what is capable. Um, the building of your, your 4G networks is a typical example of, of India leapfrogging in the right direction. So I'm extremely positive. We need a stable um, economic environment to do this and a stable investment environment. But with that, if you have, we have the right talent, we have the right market, I think we can do fantastic things together. I wanted a global view on uh, you know, the Alstom merger that was called off uh, by the European Commission and there was a mobility unit that was set to be merged with the parent. So uh, from your perspective, where does that stand at this point in time? Well, there's a clear decision. We wanted to merge with Alstom. We, we had a very good uh, offering that was uh, um, not taken in account by the uh, Commission, the European Commission, and we, we have an amazing asset. I mean, we're doing extremely well on the mobility. It's not a stranded asset. It's actually an extremely strong asset, both on the on the um, signaling part, but also on the on the on the trucks and the, the carriers we're building. So we are basically looking at the the next options, but we're actually in a very good position to actually drive that capability. Okay. Um, next forty seven uh, is the venture capital arm of Siemens. I want to understand how important is India as a part of the, of investments from that arm. 
The head of Next47 is Indian national, I always repeat this, and he sees a lot of opportunity in India. Um, the India startup um, environment is interesting because um, if you look at the US, a lot of the startups are with Indian nationals, but as it develops in, in India, we want to be part of this and we will follow the whole sort of development and help the development of the development of uh, capabilities in startups in India through Next47. We also got a chance to visit the Volkswagen factory at Wolfsburg. In fact, Siemens will be the integration partner for the Volkswagen Industrial Cloud for 122 Volkswagen factories all across the world. Here's a glimpse of the factory. Did you know that the first Volkswagen Beetle was manufactured at this plant here at Wolfsburg in Germany? We're at one of the largest and the most advanced car facilities in the world. The building that you see behind me is a pre-World War II building and I've got a chance to go inside and check it out. About five models are manufactured at this Volkswagen factory and one of them is the electric variant, the e-Golf. These models cater mainly to the European market. The manufacturing process comprises of stages like pressing, body casting, painting and assembling. Once ready, the final product then moves to the next stage. The glass elevator out here can take you right to the top of this 20 floor glass tower that houses close to 400 cars. Now this facility out here has close to two glass towers which have a capacity of about 800 cars. Center, about 3,500 cars are manufactured at the Volkswagen factory here in Wolfsburg and here that you can see behind me is the delivery center which has a capacity to deliver close to 500 models of Volkswagen cars a day. In Germany, in fact, we also caught up with Sunil Mathur who's the top boss at Siemens India to understand India's digital roadmap and the way forward. The world is moving towards digitalization. And with that, efficiencies are coming in that you can't make up through manual labor. And productivity is getting to a level of 90 plus percent, whereas in our country, we've got a 70 plus percent productivity level. There's no way you can compete with the West if you are going to do it with manual labor. And that is where digitalization comes in. It is an imperative. It will come. You spoke about CAPEX and the kind of increasing CAPEX needs that the manufacturing industry has. At this point in time, what is your view on the, on the whole private CAPEX cycle? You know, there is a lot of talk that it hasn't returned to normal levels. What is your sense on the same? I believe CAPEX is always a long-term cycle. It doesn't happen in short terms. And therefore, there may be a slowdown um, temporarily, but the story is, is there. The country has to grow. It has to grow at 8% plus. Um, we have the potential to grow at 8% plus, And CapEx is a given. It will come. It may take some time, um, but there's no doubt about it. It has to come into the Indian uh, economy. How soon do you think will CapEx levels return to normalcy? We have the elections uh, coming up. There are a lot of macro factors that could perhaps influence uh, the kind of CapEx. So do you think FY20 will be a year where we'll see revival uh, of uh, levels for CapEx? Oh, absolutely. I expect that to happen. Um, there will be growth. This country has to have that growth. Um, we are on the right track, but CapEx is the driver for it. When you talk about the larger picture in terms of Siemens India, we've seen a restructuring happening globally in terms of a vision 2020 that you're working with. And there will be three operating entities there that will be a part of you know, the global mandate. So in Siemens India, how does this work? How does this all fit in? Because 1st of April is when this entire process kicks in, right? Well, the first important thing is the customers uh, should be benefited even more out of this. And this gives a greater focus, Vision 2020 Plus, gives a greater focus on the customers. 
The back end is now organizing itself to make sure that we can increase the focus on the customers, increase the offerings on the customers, and start listening much closer to the customers so that we are able to design and develop solutions together with customers, not as a given, here is my product, you gotta buy it, but let's work on what really makes sense for you, and we develop and co-create solutions that really make sense for our customers. So what kind of improvement in terms of margins can we expect owing to this larger restructuring that's, uh, that will take place and has been implemented now? Well, I think uh, globally, um, Mr. Kayser, our global CEO, has announced that the target of the company is to grow the top line substantially, uh, as well as grow the bottom line. And India is a critical part of that component, and we will do the same thing. When you talk about the specific entities and the specific businesses that have been restructured under this, or you have a business which is a gas power business. Globally, we've seen the gas power business suffering, or we've seen some sort of pressure coming in. And in India, we've seen the same business grow uh, significantly. So how do you explain this, um, you know, uh, this dynamism uh, that's taking place at this point in time? And what's your outlook for the gas power business? Well, I think the gas power business combines power generation, um, be it uh, coal-fired, be it gas-fired, be it oil and gas, be it industrial power plants, um, with the high-voltage distribution systems, HVDC systems. Now, these are areas that the country has a huge potential for. And I see a very positive story over here. Uh, we will have to wait some time because you don't build a power plant overnight, but there's no doubt, as the country grows, they will need more power. And uh, a lot of the power plants are reaching end of life, and therefore new plants will have to come up that meet the emission norms. Uh, the COP21 norms have to be achieved, which means we will have to get into supercritical and ultra supercritical technology and that is what Siemens is able to do. At this point in time, what is the kind of revenue contribution that the digital vertical has? And going forward, how do you expect this revenue contribution to grow? Well, I believe we haven't even scratched the surface of digitalization in the country yet. Less than 1% of all assets are actually connected in the country. Now, digitalization is good, but you need sensors, you need communication devices that provide information back. And if you don't have those, you don't get digitalization. So we in India have got to start from the basics. A lot of our factories are still in the electrical stage. They need to move from being electrified to being automated and then being digitalized. And that is a potential that this entire food chain has and the country has to increase its efficiency levels almost tenfold. So at this point in time, uh, for Siemens India, what's the kind of revenue that comes from it? Is it in the range of 20 to 25 percent? Right now it's very small, it's insignificant, but it's our fastest growing segment. And I think this is where we will be able to, to demonstrate real growth in the future. In FY18, we saw a 6% decline in terms of orders. At this point in time, do you still see a sort of slowdown in um, the kind of orders that are coming your way? I think the, the slowdown that was there, we did not have a slowdown in 1718. We did extremely well in 1718. We actually had over 10% growth in 1718, and we continue to grow substantially well here in the country. Um, the, the critical factor here is a lot of our business depends on um, infrastructure and how the infrastructure will actually develop in the country. Um, as the infrastructure develops, our business will grow with it. There has been a, you know, a loss or perhaps a less a large ticket orders that are coming your way. There are more small ticket orders coming. So do you, when do you expect the tide to turn? When do you expect the larger orders to really uh, start coming in? The large, you don't come in with large orders every day, right? So um, there are large orders out there. We are being picky about the kind of orders that we take. I am not looking to grow just for the sake of growing. I want profitable growth. 
And um, so we are being picky about the kind of orders. Um, a large order is not necessarily a very profitable order. Um, while it does give you growth, it doesn't necessarily give you bottom line. And that is why we are, take, we are happier taking small and medium orders and occasionally taking a very large order that gives us a growth. But uh, the small and medium orders are really the profitable orders. Directionally give us a sense uh, in terms of what's the kind of uh, order pipeline uh, uh, that we can expect uh, going forward. Where are the big orders coming from? Where are we seeing smaller orders uh, that you all are picking up? So the big orders are coming or will come very clearly from the infrastructure segment. Um, and, and that is what we are looking forward to, power, mobility, um, smart infrastructure, distribution, HVDC. Uh, those are huge opportunities for us. And I do understand the European Commission has uh, sort of blocked the Alstom merger uh, you know, that had uh, you know, been planned earlier. And there was talk that the mobility business of uh, Siemens uh, uh, India would be merged with their parents. So what's happening at this point in time? Will it remain with the Indian entity now that the merger has been blocked off? Well, you know that the global deal is not, not going through. We in India did not take it further. So um, we decided that we will wait and watch. And when we are ready for it, we will take it to the board. So right now we have to watch what the global scenario is. When the time is right, we will take it to the board for a decision. And the board will decide whether it's the right thing to do or not. Right now we are just watching the global scenario, watching what the parent is doing. But we will do what is right for the Indian shareholders together with the, with the uh, board of directors of Siemens Limited. Uh, you've always said that you're now open to inorganic opportunities. Uh, do you think it would make sense now that this, uh, the global deal has been called off? Do you think it will make sense to perhaps um, sell the mobility business to a domestic company within the country um, since there has been an intent uh, to do so earlier? Well, I mean, the question really is, what would be the advantage of selling the business in India to a local player when we have the technology? Um, a lot of the technology that we have as Siemens India comes from the parent. So it is not owned by us. And we are very heavily dependent on the parent's technology and technology transferred to us. So I don't think it makes sense for us to sell it to a local player, but you never know. Uh, the business environments are changing on a continuous basis and we will just have to wait and evaluate all our options after reviewing the global scenario and then taking care of that and taking stock of that in the Indian environment. I can't let you go without asking you about the investment plan. One billion euros had been committed to India. Uh, how much of that has been utilized as of now? Uh, how much is spending and how much of that would you use for inorganic growth? So, uh, we are on track for that. Um, quite a substantial amount has already been done. Um, but yes, we will use some amount for, or a large amount, if we go in for inorganic growth. Depends on what the size is. We will also look at um, CapEx, continued CapEx. And we continue to do CapEx. <coughs> Particularly in terms of not necessarily a new factory, but localizing existing offerings to make them more competitive in the country. So that is definitely an option that we have. So it's time now to head to the Siemens Digital Factory in Erlangen to get a glimpse of the latest technologies in the making. Simulation 3D printing lightweight robots these are just some of the innovations that you will see here at the Siemens Digital Factory at Erlangen, Germany. Let's go check it out. Where are the 
a virtual reality center at the Siemens factory here. Now essentially what you can see behind me is the digital twin that Siemens has created. It essentially is the first stage of manufacturing where the company creates a digital twin of the product. So the product here is an inverter which the company has created to reduce the kind of time to market and it also increases the kind of efficiency and reduces the kind of costs before the product really reaches the shop floor. So the next stage from here is to go to the shop floor and see how the product is manufactured in reality. This is just one of the 30 odd robots that are there at the Siemens Digital Factory. Now the main function of the robots here is to do with mounting of electronic components for devices like the inverter. As a part of its final production process, Siemens uses its Internet of Things platform Mindsphere to use data analytics to predict failure rates, optimize production going forward and with that it's a wrap on this very special show. Thank you so much for watching.